Fighter aircraft are some of the most well-kept secrets due to the high stakes involved. However, the will of Lockheed Martin to conceal the development of the new SR-72 aircraft is no match for the curiosity of the public, as the extremely rare sightings of the aircraft have shown. What does this high-performance fighter jet look like? What is it capable of? Stay glued as we bring you how an American woman accidentally photographed Lockheed Martin's new high-performance SR-72 aircraft. Nations across the world like to compete to prove their superiority. While the most documented and visible to the public may be the space race, the world powers engage in another top-secret competition that affects everybody, the arms race. Every country prepares for the hypothetical war, and they seek to gain an advantage by being in control of the most superior fighting equipment. The sky is where much of the competition is these days thanks to the unique features of aerial warfare. World powers are countering threats from the sky with their own fighter jets, which are becoming more powerful and sophisticated. One of the undisputable leaders in the arms race is the United States, and a good chunk of its annual budget goes to strengthening its warfare capabilities. It is kept on its toes by Russia, its arch enemy on the global scene. However, one of the unique features of the US arms industry is that it gets lots of its innovations from the private sector. One such private company is Lockheed Martin, and it's currently developing the top-secret SR-72 high-performance aircraft. If an airplane needs a predecessor to be successful, it couldn't have got anything better than the SR-71 Blackbird. With the new SR-72, Lockheed is building on the success of the SR-71. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird remains the fastest and highest-flying jet aircraft in history. It has flown higher than any other and set the world record for sustained altitude flight, flying at 85,000 feet. Blackbird was developed in the 1960s during the Cold War as a high-flying reconnaissance jet. It is still considered by many as the most advanced aircraft of its type, flying at three times the speed of sound, faster than any weapon that could be fired at it. The US tasked Lockheed with building what was then an impossible war machine after the Soviets hit Gary Power's U-2 aircraft with surface-to-air missiles. The doomed plane fell 70,000 feet to 30,000 feet before Powers could release himself and bail out of the damaged cockpit. However, during this period, Lockheed's advanced development group, the Skunk Works in Burbank, had begun working on an innovative aircraft to improve intelligence gathering, one that would fly faster than any aircraft before or since, at greater altitude and with a minimal radar cross-section. In other words, the engineers were building an aircraft that could not be shot down. One of the most respected aircraft engineers that worked on the Blackbird was Kelly Johnson. He said everything about the aircraft had to be invented thanks to the impossible requirements. For example, the speed of the new aircraft was to exceed 2,000 miles per hour. Other planes of that era could reach that speed, however, they could only do so in short afterburner-driven bursts. The new aircraft had to maintain this extreme speed for hours at a time. Other aircraft with conventional airframes would melt at this speed because the friction with the atmosphere generates plenty of heat. However, the Blackbird delivered on its responsibilities as the US military used it extensively for mission-critical reconnaissance for decades until its official retirement in 1998. Lockheed has the same primary mission with the SR-72 nicknamed Son of the Blackbird. The aircraft maker unveiled it in November 2013. However, there is a huge difference between the SR-71 and SR-72. The new Blackbird has the option of being unmanned, meaning the military will not put pilots at risk of the extreme conditions and dangers expected of its super-high-speed, high-altitude flight, with the SR-72 estimated to reach speeds of Mach 6. The SR-72 is also designed to outrun any intercepting threats from the ground. The development has not come easy for Lockheed as it made several unsuccessful attempts. It had to wait for some of the technologies it needed to develop. One such technology was the Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2 or HDV-2 as part of the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency's DARPA Falcon Research and Development Project. The HTV-2 helped Lockheed in the collection of data on aerodynamics, aerothermal effects, guidance, navigation, and control. The HTV-2 had its first flight in April 2010, and the second more than one and a half years later. 
It achieved a maximum speed of Mach 20 or 13,000 miles per hour. The experience the data obtained from the HD V2 helped Lockheed to materialize better design for the SR-72. The SR-72 is a hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft with a similar size and range as its successor. It will hit targets anywhere across the continent in less than an hour when equipped with hypersonic missiles, such as Lockheed Martin's high-speed strike weapon, HSSW. The high speed of the aircraft ensures penetration into protected enemy airspace, will be able to defy conventional air defenses, swoop in from extremely high altitudes, and launch its payload before even being noticed. But in addition to that, the technology from this military project could have a revolutionary impact on future passenger airline travel between significant hubs. The SR-72 unmanned aircraft derives its power from two sophisticated engines. It receives thrust from the turbine engine until it reaches a speed of Mach 3, and the dual-mode ramjet will provide a boost to hypersonic speeds. The aircraft will use a single inlet nozzle for both the turbine engine and ramjet to reduce the drag. Skunk Works teamed up with Aerojet Rocketdyne on the turbine-based combined cycle, TBCC propulsion system to enable the aircraft to achieve a cruise speed of Mach 6, doubling the speed of the SR-71. The subscale ground test of the TBCC system were performed by integrating a small off-the-shelf turbine engine with a dual-mode ramjet scramjet integrating an axis symmetric inlet and a nozzle. The SR-72 is already popular with aviation aficionados. Movie makers are also following its development closely as the aircraft has been sported, making a cameo in the trailer of Top Gun Maverick film. In the trailer, Tom Cruise's character Pete Mitchell with the call sign Maverick can be seen piloting an experimental craft that looks suspiciously like a fictionalized variant of the SR-72. The new SR-72 has also made an appearance in a short promotional video made jointly by the United States Air Force and Space Force. The aircraft shows up at the very end of the video and only an outline and a few details are visible. The object is most likely a computer-generated image or a mock-up, but if anything, it further removes doubt that the US military is working on the mysterious plane. Beyond videos, there have been reported sightings of the SR-72. A source has revealed to Aviation Week that they spotted a small demonstrator aircraft landing at Skunk Works facilities in Palmdale, California. The demonstrator is said to be an unmanned subscale aircraft was spotted flying into the US Air Force's Plant 42 at Palmdale. That is where Skunk Works is headquartered. The vehicle, which was noted landing in the early hours at an unspecified date in late July, was seen with two T-38 escorts. Lockheed Martin declined to comment directly on the sighting. This sighting is not unusual, as classified military aircraft usually go through flight testing years before the details are made public. In other public sightings, fans have reportedly photographed the new Blackbird in Kansas, where a mysterious flying object was spotted. The person that took the pictures explained the photo is grainy because it was taken with a handheld, maxed out 400mm telephoto lens through a cloud layer, after which it was severely cropped to bring it up even closer. He added that there was no way to judge its size as there is no point of reference. But this was in addition to another sighting in Texas. This particular one was much more significant as a retired Marine with about 20 years of aviation experience commented on it. The three aircraft were spotted flying over Amarillo, and the pictures were posted online to help with the identification. The retired Marine, James Vineyard, told the Houston Chronicle that the three aircraft were the mysterious SR-72 Blackbirds. He claimed that the aircraft might have been dispatched to help in the search for the missing Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. However, other experts disagree with him, pointing out that the aircraft was still in development. So when will the new Blackbird go into operation. NASA and Lockheed are keeping tight lips on this, and the silence is understandable as this is a top-secret project. However, there are different estimates from different experts. But the consensus is that the aircraft may require a few more years before being certified, and it might be in the next decade that it will officially join the air military fighting fleet. We expect the number of sightings to increase as Lockheed tests the new aircraft. But that is not the only secret world powers are guarding. Take, for instance, the Russian Phobos mission to Mars. 
The mystery of the two probes may never be solved completely as the two probes are lost to us forever. However, before completely going offline, one of them managed to send back a collection of 38 images, and some of them will forever haunt us because of their content. Analysts believe the probe had an extraordinary encounter before going off. The Phobos mission planned to put two probes on Mars to study the planet and its two moons, Phobos and Deimos, but with emphasis on the moons. Phobos was particularly attractive to the Russians because its orbit required a relatively easy approach for a Mars orbiter powered by traditional chemical rockets. In addition, Phobos with its projected low mass relative to its size inspired a prolific Soviet astrophysicist Iosef Shalovsky to hypothesize in the popular press that the moon might be hollow and even of artificial origin. However, only one probe, Phobos II, made it to the planet. Phobos 1 operated with no issues until an expected communication session did not occur. Try as hard as they could, the controllers could not regain contact with the spacecraft. The problem was traced to a problematic software update that deactivated the attitude thrusters. This prevented the spacecraft from maintaining its lock, and the spacecraft could no longer appropriately orient its solar arrays, thus depleting its batteries. Software instructions to turn off the probe's attitude control, normally a fatal operation, were part of a routine used when testing the spacecraft on the ground. Normally, this routine would be removed before launch. However, the software was coded in PROM, so removing the test code would have required removing and replacing the entire computer. Facing lots of pressure due to the short time before launch, the engineers were forced to leave the command sequence in, even though it should never happen. However, a single character error in constructing an upload sequence resulted in the command executing, and the Russians lost the spacecraft forever. Phobos II launched about four months later, and this is where the plot thickens. The aircraft behaved as the Russians expected much to their relief for the whole of the trip to the Red Planet, and that took a whole year before it was ready for orbital insertion. However, it managed to gather some data before its own tragedy occurred a few days before it was scheduled to land. A strange event caused a critical failure. The mission controllers desperately tried to regain communication with their malfunctioning spacecraft for many hours, but nothing worked. The leaders of the mission tried to cover up the failure with the few photographs that the Phobos II returned, but leaks always happen, and some Soviet agents actually came forward with official evidence and conclusive mission data. Thankfully, Russia's hard luck did not stop other space agencies around the world from funding extraordinary experiments, including hugely successful missions like the Mars Global Surveyor, Mars Express, and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. However, the Russians have 38 photos, some of them with very sharp resolutions to show for their effort. But what was unusual about the images that Phobos II sent back to the Russians, and why did they try so hard to conceal it? One of them contained what is now known as the Phobos monolith. It is actually a large rock on the surface of Mars's moon Phobos. In size, it is about 85 meters across. Monoliths are not an unknown phenomenon. A monolith is a geological feature made of a single massive piece of rock, and you can find monoliths naturally occurring on the Earth. However, looking at this one in the pictures, it has some of the hallmarks of being artificial, which could only suggest one thing, it was placed there by aliens. The monolith is a bright object near the Stickney crater, described as a building-sized boulder. In the glare of the sun, this mysterious object casts a prominent shadow on the moon. When the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter MRO spacecraft was mapping Phobos the moon and sent images, ufologists were surprised to confirm the monolith was still standing, and it still looked as artificial as it did in the Phobos II photos. One of the things that made the monolith eerie was the sense of isolation. It was standing there in plain view, a large, rectangular object like in the middle of nowhere. Nothing in its immediate surrounding was similarly shaped or sized. However, as lonely as it stood, it was hard to imagine it got there by chance. And to this day, the questions such as what exactly it is, its purpose, and who placed it there have not been successfully answered. And when there are no clear-cut answers, you can bet humans are creative enough to come up with suggestions. For example, some Martian scientists have suggested the monolith 
was a result of the accumulation of particles over the millennia, although just how it got the perfect shape remains a difficult nut to crack. But it is more tempting to believe it was the handiwork of aliens. Famous scientist Dr. Isaac Asimov penned a story that suggested that the Phobos moon itself was a giant alien ship that was abandoned and trapped in orbit around Mars by gravity. However, the Phobos mission was not a complete failure for Russia for multiple reasons. Apart from getting photographs of one of Mars's moons, scientific data from the mission helped to confirm a theory that potential Martian water was blown away by the solar wind. Yes, the Red Planet used to have water, but the solar wind took it all away. Interestingly, solar winds could not be stopped because Mars does not have a magnetic field. This means the Earth could have lost its water too, save for its own magnetic field. In addition, some previously unseen areas of Phobos were covered in the few photographs Phobos II returned. The thermoscan instrument on Phobos II also did comparative studies of the Martian surface in the thermal and visual spectrum. We also got a few panoramic images of Mars covering large expanses of the planet's surface at a resolution of 1.8 meters. Phobos 1 also took 140 X-ray images of the Sun and its corona using its Terek telescope. It also caught a solar flare. The engineers also took lessons from the botched mission, which they applied to subsequent missions. Let's hear what you think of the super-secret new Blackbird aircraft and Russia's mysterious Phobos monolith in the comments section below.